Welcome to another episode of Stud and Dud presented by the Dallas School of Music. Thank you for listening. I'm Josh Smith. With me each week, Dr. Bob Lawrence. What's up, Doc? I'm doing great, Josh. How you doing today, man? I just noticed through no music, but it's good. We do have the Dallas School of Music up, hey, so what? we do have that logo up and rolling. We got, we got the logo. You want to put a little baseball on uh, in the Don't worry. I mean, it kind of is fitting. Come on, man. We need a base. We it is kind of well. fitting. We need a little baseball going on. I like on. the colors. Isn't that nice, Rudy? Yeah. It really is. Hang you on, man. You came up with that? I wish. Oh. I mean, it's a logo I probably could have come up with. Our logo's pretty decent, I will have to say, isn't it, Doc? It's not bad, man. It's, it's not bad. Done. On tap today, though, let's get through that while you're putting some music on. I mean, some music on. Some TV on. Some music. We need music on in the background. Biggest come. Do you think about this, Doc? Biggest comebacks ever? I did think about it. And so you can kind of think about that for now. Biggest comebacks in sports history. Kind of be thinking about that. We're going to go over that here in just a little bit. Also go over the NFL. Uh, just a little bit. But go over the NFL draft and Marvel's Avengers Endgame and the coveted stutter dud segment we're gonna add that together kind of in, in the end because why they're both duds to me and i was not so happy but what i am happy about we get to send our fourth guest into the chamber <laughs> of questions <laughs> <laughs> cannot believe that we have a, our fourth guest already which is an honor to have four guests already but now i i am going to give you the honor of introducing him because he he literally was the hitting coach of two of your favorite teams ever that's right man hitting coach of the texas rangers Hitting coach of the Chicago Cubs. I didn't know you were a Cub fan. Well, that's my National League team, Rudy. Oh, okay. He's so, from Chicago. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we are here with Rudy Jaramillo, the oh. greatest, by many accounts, many folks consider him the greatest hitting coach of all time. Of, of all, all time. time. Major League hitting coach. Let me repeat that again. Hmm. Major League hitting coach. Now, he's a humble guy, right? Oh. He, he, he's not going to like us sitting here bragging on him, but, no. but that's the fact. That is the fact, I'm and I love it. <laughs> Look at him. So, so we're, Rudy, welcome. Thank you. So we're much. glad to glad have to you, man. Here. Yeah. I, I mean, we'll get into it in just a little bit, I know, but just some of the names that he's mentioned you've been around. I'm just yes. interested to hear some of the stories that I know Doc will kind of lead you into that he wants you to tell, but it's, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad. I, w- I wish you could have been our first guest. Yes. Steve was great. Steve Kent. Do you know Steve yeah, Kent? Yeah, I was going to say, Steve, Steve, we've Steve had two Kent. MLB people he, on he now. He pitcher for, uh, he pitched for the Seattle Mariners. He was a pitcher for the, Heck. no, Kent. Kent. Yep. No, K-E-N-T. Now, Steve that would have been great to have all four, them two. Hey, we'll have them all four. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That would have been great to have him on the first show with Steve. Yeah. Hey, a couple things before you get in. Go, go, go. You don't even know this yet. No, probably not. You don't even know this yet. But Darren Laporte, I got to give a shout out to Darren Laporte. He heads up all this ticket sales yep. and suite about uh, arrangements him. at American Airlines Center. And he has agreed to, you, have, you don't even know this, man. I'm just springing this on you right now for the first time. He's agreed to handle all ticket arrangements for anybody coming through Stud and Dud that wants to get a Mavs ticket, a Stars ticket, a suite, a block of tickets. Nice. Uh, not only for sporting events, but for all concert and music events. Which that, is year-round, obviously. Well, yeah. We'll right. listen to some of the names here, concerts that he can help you with. Coming up Friday, uh, May 17th, New Kids on the Block. Ooh. They're still around. Yeah, well, yeah, they're still touring, been touring. Right. Making money. We got uh, Hugh Jackman coming, Jeff Dunham. Yeah, have you, you know about that Hugh Jackman? I, when I saw that about two, three months June ago, I'm like, what? Your June, kid, he's putting on like a theatrical show through all the different yeah. things that he's done in his career. Uh, July 23rd, Queen. Wow, I mean, there you go. I mean, not not a stud. Well, I guess you like Adam Lambert, but boy, the rest of the surrounding cast. Are you kidding me? Exactly. Uh, September fifth, John Mayer. Now, going how, to that one. I'm going to that one. Are you going to that going one? To that one. You already got, got tickets. To uh, le- well, I think it's eleventh row. Oh, well, Avery's not listening. That's what I, I keep forgetting that every time I because she doesn't know when we get on. I get tickets. I'll go on there and get them, and I get as close as I can. And I'm like, you know, oh no, no, we're, we're keep we're, keep going. Oh come on, we're down a little closer. But yeah, going to John Mayer. Well, hey, and check this one out. September twentieth, Rudy Crossroads Guitar Festival. Eric Clapton is doing a Ooh. festival down at Now, this America. is the one you kept telling me yes, about. Yes, Eric Clapton. So uh, that's September 20th, September 23rd, Phil Collins. Celine Dion is coming. I mean, are you kidding me? Celine Dion, right? That's, we have uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez. A studette. That's studette. Coming on June 20th. Studette. studette. Two studettes. Correct. Is Alec coming? Jo- who? Mariah. Uh, Mariah. Uh, no, Alec. Oh, Alec. Who? Rodriguez. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, right. That, With Jennifer? I'll, yeah. yeah. I'll go see oh, that he'll concert. Be here. Oh, he'll be here. Maybe he will be in, in attendance. Great uh, guy. Backstreet Boys, September 1. So we got two boy bands in there. Yeah, Carrie Underwood, The Who. 
So Cher. Are you kidding me? No. So you got tons of names. Tons of names. But anyway, anyway, been to two concerts in my life. Two. Which ones were they? Let's really? give it out. 19, 1973 in uh, Tampa, Florida, the Beach Boys. Wow. Oh, very good. Legendary. Classic. And I saw the Eagles here, and that's it. Well, there's two stud performances right there for you. That's yeah. all you need. That's exactly I mean. right. So, hey, um, but anyway. On two our... Cowboy games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but countless baseball games. Yeah, I was going to say, how many baseball games? <laughs> went to the Cotton Bowl, yeah. and I went to Urban Stadium. Wow. There you go. Wow. So anyway, before we jump in with Rudy, yep. uh, it's on our website now. Love it. Darren Laporte, American Airlines Center. You can get your tickets. Uh, there's a contact form that you can reach right out to, to Darren, and he'll take care of you. Awesome guy. Sales stud. There you go. Yeah, that's what he is, man. There you go, sales stud. So, so he'll take care of you guys. He took care of you. He took care of me. My, 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 me and my son just uh, went to the Stars game this last week. Had a great time. Who did you meet before the game? R- ran into Joey Gallo and um, uh, Hunter Pence. Hunter Pence, yep. yeah. Yeah. So, and Posted that got on a, the Instagram. Right, yeah, got, got a, a picture of Got a great picture. Yeah. Oh, I mean, two, so, two studs. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Darren Laporte, American Airlines Center. Check it out on yep, our yep. website. All so, right. So back to our stud. Yes. Go ahead and dive in because I know you're, you're, you I'm have got, questions away. Absolutely. Let's get into Rudy, it. Rudy, let's start, let's start, man. Just give us, give us your background, your childhood, how you got into baseball. You grew up, you were just talking to me right before the show, how you were wanting to do drums. And yeah. That was I, exciting. Uh, I was a kid. I wanted to play the drums and, uh, I never did got a set. My mom didn't want to hear that noise and <laughs> that's fine. Um, uh, uh I was born in Beeville, Texas, which is close to Corpus okay. and South Texas. I uh, moved here when I was 10. And uh, I played baseball there since five or six. And uh, that's something that's always been in my life. And then uh, it's what I love to do. And came to Dallas and, you know, started right up where I left off playing. And But ended up playing other sports. So yeah. uh, football was my love. And uh, Texas, just kind of went from there. Almost, it sure. has to be, you know. Right. It's, it's, everything, everything else was secondary. And it was just all about football. What position? Uh, I was a running back wow. at Sunset High School. Wow. Yes. And, I can see, like you were talking about, I can see you being quick, though. When you're talking, how much you average per carry? You said you average how many yards per carry? Nine. Nine. I mean, I nine. could just see, oh when I God. walked in, I was like, oh, I could yeah, I could just see that guy. Just choo, 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 choo. Hard to tackle this well, guy. I worked guy. hard, man. Yeah. You know, um, I always felt every time I stepped on the field, I wanted to be that the best guy on the field. That's didn't how you matter, got didn't, great. didn't matter what, what sport I played. Yeah. I wanted to be the best guy on that field that day. Yeah. And I knew what I had to do. You know, you have to work and work smart and, and yeah. uh, make adjustments and – it's mental. Yeah. And we're going to talk about that. I want to, I want to tap into you about the mental side of the game. Uh, I went, uh, actually, we moved to West Dallas uh, when I got here in Dallas. And then we moved to Oak Cliff and uh, uh, just, you know, kept growing as a person. I had some great coaches. Uh, There's a lot of discipline at the time uh, from my coaches, my teachers, my principals. I knew the principals well because mm-hmm. uh, I went to the boiler room a few times <laughs> to, to get my act straight. Right. But, you know, you did that today, you end up in jail. Right, right. exactly, yeah. But, you know, back then it was that's the way it was done. And you also and, uh, you speak of one thing that not one person probably knows their principal. And even uh, even in my age oh, when yeah, I was probably – today. Well, yeah, I, it, I remember my principal, yeah, especially and, the assistant guy because yeah. he was one of the ones doing the discipline. But, no, I got along with with – my coaches were great. Um, they, you know, they knew how to push me and and mm-hmm. and the good direction gave me the good love and so that's that's what you need. You have siblings? Yes. The, the, are they? I'm assuming they're athletic and played sports as well. You know, it's funny you say that because, uh, well, they played. My son played baseball, and then when he was 12 years old, he told me his dad. He said, "This is not for me." Wow. And, you know, as a dad, that's not what you want to hear. I'm in baseball. Yeah. But, you know, I said, hey, that's fine. I, I love my son no matter what. Yeah. And uh, he did pretty well for himself. He's a doctor. He's a neuroclinical psychologist. And he I'd works with so. traumatic brain, so. brain injuries with the, yeah. mili- with the military. So wow. I'm so happy that's for cool. him because he's helping other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rudy, you, you know my son Gardner because you've worked with him no in hitting. And it's funny what you say because he has no interest in music. Right. I said to him, I said, I said, you know, when he got he took that 85 mile an hour fastball in the face uh, this last spring, you know, I said to him, I said, hey, man, you, you still want to you, you still want to play? How about some how about some music lessons? <laughs> you know what he said to me? He goes, Dad, the only way I'm going to take music lessons 
is if you can provide me full contact music lessons. <laughs> full contact, right? I said, well, man, we don't have contact in music lessons. Right, right. So, uh, but anyway. Um, well, he's, I guarantee you he'll be better for it. Yeah. He'll be a big, big a strong, you know, stronger person for it, yeah. no doubt. The love of the game, you know, I, I want to talk about your love of the game. You know, I saw it with him this last spring when he had that injury. The, the night that he came home from the hospital, he was in the hospital all day. You know, from that end, sure. you know, and, uh, you know, broken, uh, fractured orbital, shattered nose. And he came home and uh, two things. He was hungry. He wanted to order some pizza. And then, two, he sat down and he turned on MLB Network because he wanted to watch mm-hmm. baseball. Watch baseball. And I thought, That's to, awesome. I thought to myself, man, that'd be the last thing I want to watch. But, man, he was like eating pizza, watching baseball. And uh, it, it, so it's, there's a love of the game. No doubt. So let's talk about that for a second. Uh do you see the same love of the game today uh, in the in the athletes, the young athletes coming up? Do you think they have the same passion, oh, yeah. same love? I think so. I mean, there's no doubt about that. You know, obviously the game's changed in right. some ways. But, right. you know, for you to get, say, to the big league level, yeah. well, you had a lot of passion because you went through a lot. And to get you to had that. to sacrifice and you had to make yeah. a lot of adjustments. And it wasn't all physical. It was a lot of mental, majority of the mental part that right. – that, that, you're having to carry with you to, to be successful. Right. So how has the game changed from the time that you started in high school and, and junior high playing ball all the way through the time you're, you coached in the big leagues all the way to the current day? How, how have well, you the, seen the game the change? The first thing I seen change was the aluminum bat. Oh. Uh, the aluminum bat was introduced in 1974. Mm-hmm. I was at the University of Texas in 1973, mm-hmm. and I got drafted in the 19th round by the Rangers, and I signed. And then uh, I remember the following year, I was looking back, and everybody was hitting like 100 points higher, and I couldn't figure it out. And then I realized that's yeah. when the aluminum bat came in. So that that kind of how much difference it made. Yeah. And, um, you know, before I forget, I'm going to go into the – the, the difference that I'm seeing between the aluminum bat and the wooden bat. Um, I remember, uh, I think what's lost is the lower half because when you use aluminum bat, all you had to be strong from your waist up and uh, you can, you could really point. crush the ball because the aluminum bat. And then I think the weight shift got away and, and the more and more the years went by those coaches, they were, that, didn't get taught the lower half. Well, they didn't keep teaching it because yeah. they didn't know. Exactly. It thought it's all about hands and the aluminum bat. Right. And, uh, you know, I see some of that even today. But uh, that's one of the things, I, the difference that I did see with the aluminum bat. You didn't really have to. You, you were, some guys were so strong, they didn't have to, to use a, the lower half as much. But right. when, you have a, sense, when you have a wooden bat, it's all about the lower half. It's all about foundation first. Right. And then, you know, it just – the Canada link takes its place. Right. Yeah. The, uh, that's where the power comes. No doubt half. about it. Yeah. No doubt about it. Right. And, and when I teach, you know, that's the first thing that I try to get the young man to understand that it's about yeah. your foundation. Anything you build, the foundation has to be there first. Yeah. And if you're teaching anything else, you're just, you're a symptoms type person. Right. right. It reminds me of golf. First thing I always thought real quick was stance. They weren't teaching you. They weren't, in, they weren't right. even in your swing. It was right. right your stance. Foundation. Yeah. Right. Literally your foundation. Right. I mean, if you don't have that right, you're not really going to get anything else above it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's interesting. That's why everybody's trying to fix that symptom. Yeah. Right. When I first met you uh, and watched you uh, work with Gardner, it's funny. The very first thing I thought after just watching you for minutes, I thought, man, this guy is a teacher, a teacher. Thank you. Right. I love it. I love that. Right. I'm not a coach. Right. I'm a teacher. <laughs> You're a teacher. And man, and as a teacher, it doesn't take me but a few seconds to recognize a genuine and true teacher. And, and likewise, it only takes me a few seconds to recognize one, somebody who's not, uh, but Immediately, I said, "Man, Rudy is a teacher." I think, real quick, I think that's what makes great coaches. They're usually really good teachers. They're yeah. not. Right. They're right. not. You get my point. I mean, right. you can have like the Sabins of the world, but most of the time, those great coaches are individually really good teachers. That's whether right. if it's life, life, what, what multiple things going on, but right. like you said, but I, I mean, don't know what you know. You I don't teach. know what that is. Too, you, you always heard the saying is, you know, the greatest hitters can't teach, and yeah. then the guys that struggled and and you know up and down and I don't know if that's anything to do with it but you know 
Yeah. I've been around a lot of great, great hitters, and they didn't really know how to teach because yeah. they had such a great talent in mind well, right. that it was there for yeah. them. Right. Where but everybody else struggles to try to right. get to that point. Yeah. Well, it, it, you've given it a lot of thought. You've thought about it, and you think about it, and you study it. You're a student, you're a student of the game, and you're a student of hitting. And that's obvious when you watch when when someone watches you teach a young man how to hit. And one of the things that I I recognized right away, which I absolutely loved, was how you immediately, first and foremost, wanted to, to address the mental side of hitting. How it how you have to know what's going on here when you hit before any of this can even happen. And you and I have talked about that, that a conceptual understanding drives physical development. Yeah. That if you have a, if it's foggy here or complicated here or confusing here or unclear here, it's foggy and complicated and unclear down here. Yeah, and that's how kind of we started relating it to music. Right, You know. right. We talked about uh, being tense, oh, yeah. you right. know, and yeah. the sound changes. I was telling him that I don't even have to look at the hitter. All I have to do is listen to the sound of the ball hit the back <laughs> right. and tell you how cl how clean the swing was. Yeah, right. And uh, because you hear that golf real clean click. That almost reminds me of golf, exactly. You can That's tell. I can just hear. do that and do the same thing with golf. I can tell, like, right. either myself and or you, whoever had a good you know, Another thing swing. I used to do is watch my hitter's eyes in the batting cage because your eyes dilate when the ball's coming in because you're focusing yeah. in. And then uh, when you don't, that means you didn't pick up the ball. Oh, yeah. I could see the their, 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 their eyes would go boom, boom. Wow. Right. <laughs> because you're, 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 see you're it. yeah, exactly. You're in point. Yeah. Wow. So, um, so talk to us about that real quick. The mental side, what's the best advice you can give a young man starting out any sport, either. right? In baseball, well, yes, any sport, but baseball particularly in hitting. What 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 would be the best advice that you could give any young young boy starting out? Well, it's about your self talk. Mm. You know what you tell yourself and your thoughts. Mm. You know, and and that's the thing, the challenge in hitting because you fail so much. You know, and you got to and you got to dig deep, and wow. you know, and 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 change those thoughts because they'll drag you down. They'll beat you. Right. You know, you're failing in front of, I don't care who it is, at what level, right. you know, and failure is failure. Uh, if you feel, if you feel the pressure when you're in high school or college or big leagues, it's the same feeling. Right. So it doesn't change. So that's what you're dealing with, how to, how to, how to try to improve your mental skills, you know, your self-discipline, your self-directive, you know, uh, just how you talk to yourself yeah. positive, positively. Right. You know, I just, it's funny you say that. I was just reading uh, some information on Babe Ruth, and he has a quote where he's talking about, you know, baseball is a game of failures. And he said, and you learn how, you have to learn how to handle that. And he goes, and the great thing is tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow's, yeah. a, tomorrow's a new day. That, you know, every, every game you have some form of failure. It's not everything doesn't go just exactly as you wanted it to go. And then how you deal with that, and then tomorrow's a new day. Oh, yeah. That's a that's a good thing about it, you know. Right. Uh, other sports, you might have to wait three or four days <laughs> or, a week. or a week, you know, and it's in your mind and you're yeah. fighting it. Right. And then in, in baseball, you know, hey, you got to get you got to change that mindset even faster mm -hmm. overnight. Right. So, so what you tell yourself that night, it's so crucial because if you if you hard on yourself, you're not going to sleep, and then you're going to be tired. And then, and then you know, it can snowball because you play every day. That, right. That's the toughest thing to do. I think back right. now, these guys that play every day. That's that's, and then traveling, that's a hard job. It's a grind. Really, yeah. it's a grind, and you got to be tough mentally and right. physically, and right. have you know have that all pack that whole package. Yeah. Right. Before we uh, just, just how I say all sports, even what I do now, trading stocks, how that implementing the mental side it's ridiculously huge. I mean, you talk about failure, 80 to 90% of rookie traders, so you start out there and you're, you're now trading, lose. You're talking about, lo lo a, a, you get my point, the win-loss oh, rate yeah, there is yeah. ridiculous. And you're losing money. You, money. <laughs> you're, you're not losing like, oh, I'm, just, I'm making millions of dollars and I've just struck out. Like, right. you've lost your own money, now you're, you get my point. Right. So just that mental side at first, even for me, questioning like, and then you, when it's cloudy up here, 
it's cloudy here. I'm going. What am I? What am I doing? When yeah, then? When it you're starts? Worried about yes. That, that fa- that exactly. Loss. Exactly. And then you, everything Trying when to it's, make it up. Yes. Then Trying. you're starting. Then you're. Then it's all when it finally starts clicking, like you're talking about. And then you're not even. You just. You know what? When to get in? When to get out? What's right? What's wrong? You're not thinking about it. Your eyes are like you said. You're boom. You're you're laser focused in. Right. And it's just crazy how that relates. Even just. I mean, we're literally wearing. Which, I'm in his chat room. Deckmar trade. Shout out to him. But. Guy that's taught me so much, but you get my a teacher. I mean, you get my point. Like he's one of my mentors, or you get my point. Right. You you find a good mentor too, a teacher along the way. That's certainly going to help you. But yeah, it's just crazy when you do when it's cloudy up here. Whatever you're doing in life, it's cloudy. Right. When you're right. you yeah. got it up that's here, right. that's exactly it's right. It's just you're crazy. Confused. Yeah. Correct. You're Your confused. Thoughts are com- not, yes. Not um, the, right. One thing I wanted to ask you about because one of the things that I love about you when it comes to teaching and hitting. Uh, you're old school, right? Uh, today, you know, I know these new coaches and hitters are always talking about this thing called launch angle now and swinging up uh, through the ball. And, and um, uh, so there's this, you know, you got the old school thought, you got this new school that's starting to creep in into the game. I just kind of want to get your get your thoughts on that because I I'm an old school guy, and I tend to I tend to believe that if something is 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 true today it's true 100 years from now it's true 200 years from now truth can't change otherwise it was never true. the truth yeah, right. so talk to talk to us a little bit about how you've witnessed this uh a philosophical change in baseball and hitting that you're seeing younger players starting to adopt uh i'm just thinking back of babe ruth right watching his swing ted williams swing hank aaron or whoever right this you can't change it. Right. It swings the same. You can't try to. <laughs> that's what you I get, can't that's try what to change it. a pitcher to do. Right. You know, just just the way the body works. And coming to that, long time ago, I decided I used to be a symptoms coach, and you don't get anywhere. I used to tell the guy, stay back, stay inside the ball, stay through it, don't push, pivot. Well, I really was only confusing him. Then. Uh, once I got with the Houston Astros in 1990, and then I really started uh, uh, figuring out what what do I need to teach, and the kinetic link or the biomechanics of the swing is 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 the best scientific way to mm-hmm. teach. It's nothing that I came up with, or but I broke it down in layman's terms so other people could understand. Right. So so what I did, I labeled the 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 chain of events that take place in kinetic link and every good if you look at a hitter today they all do the same the good hitter does the same thing he has good balance he has good rhythm uh, he separates with timing meaning that his front foot and hands go in opposite directions to get in a hit position mm-hmm. and then fourth he stays square and fifth weight shift that's what every good hitter does that has success today and the guys that don't, they always leave four out, which stay in square, meaning that their hands go back, but they come with their front leg. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm seeing in the big league today. And you don't get recognition, and you can't back the ball up to make good decisions. Right. So that's what I based my hidden philosophy on. Right. It's just teaching those basics, being the balance, rhythm, separation, staying square, weight shift. Well, now you can't think of five things, so I translate hidden one, two. Yes. One's getting in a hidden position, two, transfer your weight into it. And in the meantime, you're getting all the information. Uh, when you get your foot down, you get automatically uh, recognition of what pitch and where. Now, to let the ball get to you, you have to stay square, closed. And, and that little part right there is so mental that's, that that's the difference with the guy being a good hitter or not. Yeah. And because it's going to either you go around the baseball and you're going to hit it in the ground or pop it up, or when you stay inside, you're going to get backspin. So that's why I feel like I've had success because I broke it down to simplicity as far as, far as the mechanics of the swing. Mm-hmm. And, gotcha. and now, the, now the hard part, obviously, is the mental part. But you gain confidence from seeing yourself be successful in practice applying those five steps yeah, right. so now when you ha- when you see right. that result well that's going right. to get your attention that yeah. hey man this works and right. that's how i won my guys over yeah. and then once i won them over then i started with the mental part and how long does it usually take like say even for an mlb hitter which they're the best they are obviously how long does that take for the average hitter to go from not getting it to clicking 
well, it's all on that person. Yeah. So it can, uh, it can be it, never or it, it could be, be never, yeah. or it can be months, year, whatever. Yeah. What time you have with that person yeah. to try to see where he is mentally mm-hmm. and then you attack. Mm-hmm. And it's basically by confidence. Yeah. So how you feel about yourself and how you carry yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always told my guys, I said, you have to be arrogant. If you want to be good, you have to be arrogant inside. That's just the nature. Yeah. You got to believe. Game. You, you got to believe in yourself. Right. And, you know, and we take these – players the wrong way because they're cocky and they're they strut but you have to have that yeah uh and some guys that don't do that it's inside believe yeah. me yeah they don't show it yeah there's a few yeah that are somehow they don't it's, yeah it's, they hold they're that they're in. probably they're probably egos even bigger yeah, probably, that, right so, you know yeah right so, but that's what you have to have yeah right you do yeah you know no doubt in anything even my well i'm not wearing i'm wearing griffey for for baseball and for your purposes usually i'm wearing jordan but you get my point my goat of all time michael jordan Tell me he didn't walk around with a little swagger. You get my, I mean, have he, I mean yeah, you yeah. have to. Uh, you mentioned about using language that um, the the hitter or the student uh, understands, and that's so important as well. One of the things I love about you when working with Gardner, you'll explain something in different ways using different terms, knowing he, there's going to be one of those terms or one of those words he has to grab onto he has to know what that is and as good teacher you recognize that not everybody uh uh we want to think that everybody understands the language we use i'll give you a great example i had a student in here teaching not too long ago and i said to him it's a little guy i said john man uh you're hesitating in measure five you can't hesitate bro you got you got to move right through that you can't hesitate he said okay uh, all right so he starts over again he starts playing he gets to measure five he does the exact same thing I said, John, come on, man. You can't hesitate, right? He goes, all right, okay, okay, I got it, I got it, right? So he goes again, gets to measure five. Guess what he does? He hesitates. I said, John. He says, Dr. Lawrence? I said, yes. He goes, what does hesitate mean? I assume. Something simple. Something that simple. I thought, who doesn't know what the word hesitate means? Who? And he didn't. And he had the courage to say to me, Dr. Lawrence, what does, awesome. what does hesitate yeah. mean, right? So That's hidden. I, yeah. <laughs> right? And I see you w- in working with my son. I see that, that care, that teaching, where you want to make sure. Do you, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, does that make sense? Is, well, you have to ask him, what does that mean to you? Correct. I learned that as a teacher. Correct. You know, I go, hey, you got to separate. And I go, what does that mean to I mean, you? Yeah, right. There's so a great... So he can ex- explain to me when he starts. Right. And hit, get in, you know, that's, right. But you have to have... Because the human mind is so weird. You know, we're very all complex. weird in our own yeah, ways. Yeah, very complex. So, so, so every word's not going to mean the same thing to everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, that's exactly so right. Yeah. That's why you have to have four or five different things explained the same way. Exactly. And then ask them to get feedback to, so you know as a teacher if they're understanding what you're trying to get across. Correct. Yeah. Even to the simple, like you could get 100 people in here and it would be 50-50, I'd bet. Ask them, is that orange or, bl- orange or brown? Correct. Right. Right. And they're going to all give you a different answer. Different, different yeah. answers. So every every mind, like you said, is just going to have a different perception. But you have to practice, though. It's yeah. like it's just like hitters. Oh man, they want to swing all day long yeah. because <laughs> they don't want to work on the mental part. Yeah. You know, they want to react. Yeah. But, it's like I want to go hit. I want to hit driver all day. Where you know you go in the driving range. You got to. You got to. And I got to. You got to. Pitching, you got to hit every club. You can't just boom, boom, boom. You're going to have to go to the pitching. You know what I mean? You have to do every little facet that yeah, there is. Yeah, they don't want to work on the mental part because yeah. it's the hard part. No, no doubt. But, you know, too, another thing with sports is uh, I think the guys that are more consistent, they learn feel. Uh, they right. learn feel of what they're, they're swinging, whatever club it is, golf or Whatever it may be. Or right. football, like even football, I think are good touch field. passers. The, like Brady in the Super Bowl, 40 years old essentially, right. those touch passes in the fourth quarter, right. set 18, 20 games into a season. Right. Those beautiful, I mean, not many people, that's my point. You, there's so many different facts, but that's one of my things I'm just right. thinking of how that's one thing that you've got to work on right. or you're never going to be a great quarterback. So not only feel, but then, then the ability to replicate that. Yeah, no doubt. Repeat it. Repeat it. Repeat it because that right. way you're not thinking about mechanics. Right. You're just worried about that feel you have, right. you know, that incorporates those right. mechanics and the timing. Right. And that's mental because you have to trust to do it. Right. And and the you know, the two things that I always stress was is 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 controlling your breathing. Because when your mind gets a mm. little tight or you get a little anxious, 
well, you get a little, get a little hyper. So the only way you can control that is go to your breathing so you can slow your mind down. And slow that's hitting. It down. Right. That's hitting right. or anything that right. you feel a little tension or, or, right. or like oh, yeah. that control guy, those emotions. That guy pat, you know, not be able to hesitate, right? Well, or, it's or, it's funny because when I watch you when I watch you teach, right? I, and, and you're teaching baseball, right? And I sit in the stands, I watch you teach, and I say to myself, is he teaching baseball? Is he teaching music? Be, be, the similarities. Because the similarities are so it's amazing right that's what cracks gardner up i'm all i'm i'm he's going like dad you're acting like you know exactly what he's talking about i said i do know what he's talking about in a different discipline it's right, the exact right, same right, thing right. i do know what he's talking about because you know when you sit, when you get to the play you want to have a plan you already have the plan on deck you already know what you're going right. to do you visualize it you see yourself yeah. now you're working on just focusing on timing right and letting your eyes be your mind. Right. Your eyes sees the ball. Your eyes knows what a strike is. Your eyes tell your hand yes or no. Right. Because the mechanics are taking care of the rest for you. Right. Making it a strike or not. Right. And that's the key. So, okay. So, who are some of the best hitters that you've ever worked with over the years? That guys that just... Oh, gosh. They um, did get it immediately. Like, as in, when I, the comment yeah. reverting back to that question, where uh, they got immediately... Well, I started... And they Nineteen eighty three I got my job with the Rangers. Uh I was um coaching uh, Little League, Sandy Koufax and uh, prior to that was Pee Wee Reese for about half a year. Uh I had a man named Felix Ortega who was my mentor. Uh <clears throat> he asked me to coach for him, to be his hitting coach on this team. Mm -hmm. And they went and won the uh national championship in uh in Pee Wee Reese. The next year I joined them full time. Uh, we, first year we got beat in regional. Second year uh, <clears throat> we won the national championship in uh, in the Sandy Koufax division. Wow! And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to get back into baseball, and I didn't know how. <clears throat> so one day I said, <clears throat> "I'm gonna go up to Ranger Stadium, knock on the door, take my little <laughs> clippings, and ask I for just, a job." I just can't. And believe. that's this what I did. Amazing, that is great. It's an amazing and, uh, <clears throat> story. Right? I went up there. To, I wanted to talk to Joe Klein, was the general manager at the time, and I knew Joe because I played for Joe when Joe was a minor league manager. Joe I played Klein. Joe Klein. That is so funny because of Joe Klein, the Arkansas rate. That's just so funny. Like that, two famous Joe Kleins. This <laughs> one I've never even heard of. I anymore. played it with him in. Um, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. And oh. then, you know, years later, he went up and became the GM. And uh, so I went up there with my little clipping and I approached him and the lady, the, the secretary, you know, he was busy, you know, and so I waited for about an hour. I didn't care. I was already there. Was a movie moment, totally. And, and you know, uh, I remember I was my buddies and they're going, you're crazy, yeah. you know, because they thought that I was going to take these little clippings and I was going to get a job. Somehow. And you know what I told them? I said, you know, all they can do is say no. Exactly. That's what I felt in my That's mind. It, the best so, I've ever told me when you try to do stuff like that. So I went and he talked to me. And then I got a, then they got a call from Tom Grieve, who was the God. farm director at the time. I met with Tom and uh, called me a day or two later and they hired me. Wow. And I was, um, and that gave me my start. I went to Rookie League just as a coach, and I had Ruben Sierra and wow. Jerry Brown, who played like 12 years in the big leagues. <laughs> Ruben Sierra was a strictly right-handed hitter, mm -hmm. striking out two or three times a game. Oh. We lived in the same complex. We lived on the beach. So at night, I got him to get a bat, and we'd go swing left-handed because he was so athletic. I yeah. could see it. Wow. So I said, don't tell nobody because I wasn't a hitting coach in my first year. And then uh, Grieve called me. Later on, he said, hey, you think you could do something with Ruben from the left side because he's really struggling from the right side. Uh, like, yes. <laughs> the the next, the next day, he hit a double off of – I'll never forget. He hit a double in, called Pirate City, Pittsburgh Pirates, a oh. little sign, 380. And the rest is history. Batting and, lefty. And Yes. And that kind of – Golly, that's – opened up their eyes that maybe I did know something about hitting. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, cause I managed four years and I was a minor league hit instructor for three. And so that's just a short time. You know, usually coach it 15, 20 years and never make it to the big leagues. But I had this determination, this fire that yeah. I wanted to get there in a hurry. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and I got a call in 1989 from the Astros. I interviewed and um, I got the job. Wow. It's fantastic. So kind of started there in 90. I was there, you know, I had 
obviously there were some great players there with Lee Gonzalez, Luis Gonzalez, yeah. Jeff Bagwell, yeah. uh, King Caminetti, yeah, Caminetti uh, 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 Bijo, Steve Finley, yeah, wow. and they're all 22, you know, real young they're guys. They were young, yeah. Real young time, guys. Yeah, 90, yeah, yeah. It was a good experience there. We got fired in 73. <clears throat> then uh, they, Bob Watson was assistant GM, wanted to keep me, call me late that the new owner didn't want me, Drayton McLean. He wanted somebody new. <clears throat> you know, that's baseball. But all the jobs were gone, so <clears throat> I committed to the Rockies to to a minor league. I remember deal. I looked that up. Yeah, the uh, Ben Rockies. I was in was Ben called? Oregon yeah. managing the rookie league team, so I went from the big leagues to rookie league to the lowest level. And uh, I remember, you know, I didn't get down. I sucked it up, and I said, "I'm getting back to the big leagues." Wow. That was my mindset. Right. And uh, <clears throat> I went to Ben, and it was a really. I mean, it was. What did get me though? I was used to being on airplane, people getting my luggage. <laughs> Not got, no it was in a bus. <laughs> I took my luggage to the to the clubhouse and I forgot it because I expected somebody to take it for me. Yeah, yeah, right. And it was a really rude awakening that um, <clears throat> really opened my eyes. You know, if I ever got back, right. you know, the dedicate or whatever I had to do to stay. Mm -hmm. And I was throwing BP out there sweating. The kids came in and said, Coach, Bag Bagwell's talking about you on TV. It was an all-star break. So wow. <clears throat> the Rangers heard him. Uh, Doug Melvin heard him. And then that's how I got my interview back with the Rangers in 90, 90, 94, uh, winter 94, and I became the hitting coach in 95. Wow, just like went from this to this, yes. to just right back, back up. Big leagues to rookie league, back to the big leagues. Wow. I don't know how that happened, but I know. <laughs> it can happen. You did it. Well, you, did it. you know, I have a lot of faith, right. and I know that had a lot to do with it. That's awesome, man. So, uh, And you, you know, were with the Rangers then how many years? Uh, For uh, 15 years. And putting up ridiculously 15 good 15 years. Tops but, in the league. you know, you're only as good as your players. Right. You know, um, one rookie league, my 1986 rookie league season, I had Sammy Sosa. 16 in right field. I had Juan Gonzalez, 16 in left field. I had Dean Palmer at third base, 18. I had Ray Sanchez, who ended up playing like 10, 12 years in the big leagues, that brought three kids in Puerto Rico, said, pick one of them, give them $1,000. Oh, That's what we're going to give them. Wow. So I picked Ray Sanchez because I saw his athleticism fielding and with his hands, not a hitter. And then he developed into a pretty good hitter. One of the best hit and run guys I've ever seen play the game. Yeah. Wow. He had that knack for it. Yeah. So that was a really good team. And I'd already had uh Ruben Sierra in 80 83. Right. Yes. Eight, six, eight, 86 was that team. Yeah. So, so, so I already had Ruben and Jerry Brown. And then the Rangers had great drafts. Wow. And, and so you know that kind of went from there. And then you know Sosa never came up as a ranger you know he got traded yeah, but right. then i and then we got him back towards the end of his career right right so uh rangers 15 and then i resigned in 09 i went to the cubs for two and a half years and i got fired right and now, real baseball quick, real quick because I, I developed a whatever passion for well, i should say develop for whatever reason i love king griffey jr growing up so but after that i, didn't, I never really had a team obviously I'm from arkansas so there's really not much to a lot of people were St. Louis Cardinal fans. If you're from Arkansas, if you're in Arkansas, oh, yeah. there are a lot of Cardinal fans. It's like almost like there are a lot of doubt. There are Cowboy fans if you're, if you're from Arkansas, but I just never liked the Cardinals. But anyway, around 2000, it was 2004. I was up in college. My I moved in with a bunch of roommates. Well, a bunch, two guys. One guy's favorite team was the Cubs. One guy's favorite team was the White Sox. So it was funny that yeah, they were and they're both from Arkansas. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, well, I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll bandwagon on a team, and for whatever reason, bandwagon on because it was one of my dad's teams growing up, the Mets. So bring me back to this point. How close were you to getting the job in 04? Uh, with the Mets? Yeah. Well, uh, I was second. That's what I thought. Uh, basically what happened, um, Omar Manaya was a general manager, and Omar Manaya was my coach when I managed. Oh, and he no. was a scout. He was a scout, and then he came and coached in the winter because of some of the kids that he, he had signed. And the, the kids loved him, so he was a great, you know, intermediate guy, coach for us. And Omar and I were always real close, manager and coach. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's how the business goes, yeah. who you know. Yeah. So he asked if I was interested in the, in the managerial job, and I said, yeah. 
and um, you know, I prepared. I remember, you know, Buck Show Walter helped me prepare John Hart. You know, they were for me getting that job, you know, if that's what I wanted to do. So I went to New York and uh, interviewed. Then uh, a couple of weeks later, they asked me to come back, and it was between Willie Randolph and myself. And, you know, that was a no-brainer. I told myself, Willie Randolph. I said, God, <laughs> this guy played for the Yankees. He played for the Mets. I mean, right. you know. Yeah. Right, kind of yeah. that think was a, about it. That yeah. was the right decision, really. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he had, you know, had a good little run with him. And he, yeah, and that's you know that's what happened. Right. But I was just, I just fortunate, curious, you know, to I get an interview for a big league yeah. job in the big leagues. You know, that's pretty. Right. But cool. my my heart wasn't hitting. And that was yeah, and that was probably and that's probably the, the the closest I guess you've ever gotten right to getting a managerial position, or even yes. probably closer yeah. than one. Well, I was never trying to get a managerial job. So funny you say that because the Mets called me this year around All Star break and they told me if I could um, uh, let them – they wanted to know why their hitters couldn't hit the ball the other way. They're all pulled – going mm-hmm. like basically second base over or the opposite if you're a right-handed yeah. hitter. And thinking back about what I just explained about those mechanics, not staying square, not staying close, that's what they weren't doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're collision hitters. So when you're a collision hitter, you just hit a ball in the area that you're swinging. Exactly. You don't You don't get recognition. You can't back it up, and you're really inconsistent. And basically, not you know that's what they were doing when they were struggling. So I gave them the information. Then they call and say, "Hey, are you interested in uh, in the big league job?" And man, I got excited, you know, yeah. just because them asking me and oh, yeah. I had no business going, but uh, I went and interviewed, and I was prepared, man. I was prepared. This possible as I could be and I felt really great about it and uh it didn't happen Uh oh that's still obviously you're here but that's still that's crazy that they that you you know at least somebody was thinking about me you know right it shows back why you're a stud and why you're on the show that's right you know I wanted to go back so bad but now now I realize you know I got my mother's no cliff she's 94 I got it you know right she's more important than anything at this point correct that's cool. That's an interesting little tidbit. Yep. There you go. Hey, speaking of hitting, tell the story. You you shared it with me one time, but I'd love for you to share it with our listeners. Uh, the time that you met Ted Williams. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, back to 83, uh, I was always a big Ted Williams reading his books because I always wanted to learn. I actually started watching film in 1968 mm-hmm. of myself in high school. I had somebody come and film me and took that three weeks to get that big old reel back. Yeah. You could hear that little noise clicking. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I was I wanted to see what was going on in a swing. You know, right. I, I was mm-hmm. trying to learn. Oh, yeah, that helps. I mean, that's so, all we do in golf now. I remember that's what yeah, that it was just a, huge. you know, what I got from it. But yeah. <laughs> lost my train of thought. Ted Williams. Ted Williams. Ted Williams. Yeah, Ted. Um, I was coaching third base. We were playing the Red Sox in Winter Haven, and the minor leagues are here, the big leagues are over there. And I was going, I know Ted Williams up there. So I told somebody to come and c- coach third for me, and I took off. <laughs> I took oh off to the, to the big league part, to the cages, and here he was. Ted Williams was, was in the cage. Oh my and I waited God. real patiently, and I was aggressive. Like, hey, Ted, I said, you got a minute? And uh, kind of looked at me, you know, because I was in the Ranger uniform. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I like to talk hidden with you. I said, I've read all your books, and I want, you know, I want to kind of tell you what, what I think. And, um, you know, he talked to me a couple of minutes. Yeah. And then um, we, we went back later on, and I went back again, <laughs> looked for him again. And he gave me a little more time. And I think the most important thing at that point in my life, he goes, you're going to be a good hitting coach oh, one day. Man. And whether he was lying or just making it yeah. up or what, I took it to heart. Yeah. This was Ted Williams. Right. Ted Williams. So you always have that in the yeah. back of your head, too. I, I don't see Ted Williams as the kind of guy to just throw out. Probably yeah, he's not. a liar. So I, I think that was very genuine. genuine. Because yes. I didn't want to hear what he had to say. I want to real quick tell him what I thought yeah. that I'd learned from his book and my mm-hmm. my philosophy or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, man, when he said that, uh, that was that was a, such a confidence builder. Oh, I bet yeah. it was. You know, and just think about it. In life, you might do that for somebody. Yeah. Correct. You're not even realizing it. You know, just tell them That's right. how good they are, how you know That's right. you feel yeah. that they're going to accomplish something yeah. and you know make something out of themselves. Well, to that point, to that very point, my son always leaves a hitting lesson with you, feeling great about himself well you know that's that's the teacher that's, that's the that's teacher coming back to that again yeah right. you have a great teacher my, my whole sure, ambition yeah. was i cared more about him the 
I mean, I used to tell them, I probably care more about your head than you do. Right. You know what I mean? Because right. I, want, I want to see, be successful. Right. You know, my so gratification like, yeah. is seeing you be successful, not failing. I wish I could hear this guy each day in chat. That debt mark, like there'll be days where he doesn't trade, but he just goes to profits chat, you know, because he has his whole little webinar set right. up and we're all in there. It, that just gets him so pumped up just to see other people like this. And you, it just gets like this. He gets so pumped up right. seeing other people profiting, knowing that he's taught them correct and they're correct. now making money. You know, right. like that's just exactly what you want. Yeah. And a mentor or chief that's, teacher. You feel good about it because you're helping someone. Right. But exactly. Love it. So uh, many blessings in your life. Many blessings. No, no doubt about it. And uh, you just mentioned probably your biggest blessing i mean it's amazing your mom's still with you 94 years age no and she, she's still alive and yeah she's she's, still... she's been great you know she's been there for me oh, like any mom yeah you that's know, right. all the moms best are mom, great yeah. Yeah. right and uh, uh <clears throat> i want to uh, thank my wife you know she i was married for 47 years right. and uh, met my wife in the eighth grade at another five years wow. and uh, you know today she made me I am today what I am That's because right. of her. And she <laughs> passed in uh, 17 ovarian cancer. Oh. And it's been a struggle, yeah. but um, my faith keeps yeah. me going. Yeah. My self-talk, obviously, yeah. is really coming into play. Right. All I learn in baseball, I'm using it today to stay strong and to just go to the next day right. because it's hard. Right. You know, I mean, she was... She was everything. Oh yeah. yeah, right. You know, right from the eighth grade, right. it's forty-seven years, wow. yeah. and uh, so yep. all this mental toughness and my faith—it's all coming into play yeah. because I just live day to day. What, and, a, what and, a blessing, right? And I, I was, you know, it's I just, so hard uh, living by yourself. Right. The lonely nights and afternoons, right. especially but, after forty, almost fifty but, years. Of... But I always somehow put a positive in there. You know, because you. Well, because is, yeah. I, because if you start doing the other way, you start thinking back, right. and then and then it just snowballs. Yeah. Right. And I think we all do that to a certain degree, and just, we just. But you have to have just like in hitting that red light has to come on, and you got to tell yourself, "Hey, I got to change my thoughts. Yep, that's right. Positive thoughts, and let's go." There you go. Just celebrated my 21st anniversary yesterday wow. with Tamlin. So yesterday, right, great. yesterday, 20, yeah. 21 years, man. Ah, thank you guys. Yeah. All right, well, this is a perfect segue. <clears throat> okay. To, into our next segment. Okay. You're talking about the middle toughness. Yes. And I think someone was lacking for about a decade, and that's the reason we're bringing up this next segment. Okay. Greatest comebacks of all time in golf, and the reason why we're bringing this up is because Tiger Woods finally wins the Masters. You know, ten years. Yes. But it just speaks to what you're even talking about. What you're talking about. Mental toughness is what you've got to do to be successful, I think, anywhere in life, no matter That's what right. you're doing. Any discipline. Any discipline. You know, what's the hardest part that I've seen Tiger, because when he was failing, people were jumping on him. That too. Oh, I hate to see man. That's the I mean, world we live in, and I hate the media. That's why I kind of got out of like, media, but it's, it, it's you know, horrendous. People want you to fail. They do. <laughs> they do. They do. They that, want I mean, you to fail more than exactly they want right. you to succeed. I don't get it. You know, they want you to fail. That's exactly and, right. Uh, you know, that I was so happy when – uh, I saw him win after 11 or 14 years. Yeah, Correct. I mean, and then, well, he nuts. went through the struggles, but he never gave up. That yeah. perseverance. Surgeries. Uh, and, man. I mean, one year, you had one year down and you were back up. Imagine having about a, a decade of yes. being down. I mean, yeah. he, he kind of reached it because he did. He had those couple, like 2013, he had a couple years where he, he'd kind of do this, but, but then it was anything. immediately, huh? He didn't win anything, yeah. though, right? Right. No, 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 right. Major nothing, tournament. Yeah, no major. Well, he, ran, he, won a few, he, won, he won a few tournaments, oh, but nothing yeah. major. Nothing, nothing no nothing, majors. Right. Yeah, that was the drought. It was 11 years, no major. Majors, but still, regardless, even if you get a few wins, it's nothing like make because you were right. You were 14 in, right? You were on the cusp essentially of breaking Jack's record, right? And now you've just, you know what I mean? So yeah, great, great win for him. I wouldn't call it the greatest comeback of all time, but it's why we're bringing it up. It's a big comeback. Big comeback. Oh, it's a big comeback. Doc, what would do you have one? Did you think of one? I, I think the Boston Red Sox coming back from 3-0 against the New York Yankees. Uh, on my to, others list to take that series and then eventually win the win win world, world series, series. And on top of the fact that you hadn't won in however many you know Correct. gotten the big band being off your back i mean holy cow to be down three you know they're three down nothing three, in any series three oh in that series and they come back and win that that's pretty remarkable wow like definitely have it right there under uh george foreman uh beating uh, michael moore 45 year old george <laughs> foreman a, beating a 20 that's a pretty good comeback yeah michael moore 35 and 02 oh by the way with 30 ko's when he faced them. nobody expected that no that was on my others list of course jordan's on my others list when he came back and then takes the bulls to 72 and 10 remarkable comeback 
But of all time, oh, and this one, here's what, here's one that almost made the list here, and it's actually a DFW story, and I forgot about this, and I looked this up every time. It almost, and it, this would be the best comeback of all time if, if they actually would have pulled it off. So the one that I was going to, the one that would have topped the list, Plano East was, uh, was up, uh, I should say, was down against John Tyler. They were down 41-17 with three, you've heard, I'm sure you've heard, with three minutes to go. 41-17 down three. I mean, 41-17, to 17, three minutes to go. That's how much you're Clinton down. Clinton was calling it. Wow. Uh, that, I know, you can look it up. It's an awesome call. Listen to these guys. They recover three straight onside kicks, touchdowns on each one of them. They pull ahead 44-41 to 41 with 24 seconds left. So what do you do? What? On ticket, onside kick it again, right? So you can just go four in a row, right? No, no, no. They kick it off because obviously you're up 44 to 41. They take that kick off 97 oh, yards right. back for the touchdown, for the game-winning touchdown. That's ridiculous. What happened to Duncanville, right? It is very it. similar, yeah. Just the, just the last play. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, how about that? I think that? Of Brady's, though. Brady, when he came back. Oh, yeah. Uh, they were down at the half like, Something ridiculous. The Super Bowl against yeah, the Falcons. They're down like 20 at the half. Yeah. But my biggest ever is because he's did, he did it twice, Mr. Frank Wright. You you remember this? You're like Frank Wright? Frank Wright. The Buffalo Bills coming back on the Houston. Oh, oh that was Now huge. that's number two. Yes, Let yes. me give you number one on the list. Yes. 19, the year is 1984, the year I was born. All-world Miami Hurricanes, which we know how great they were in college football, mm-hmm. had Bernie Kosar at the helm at quarterback. Oh, only a Heisman candidate facing old Maryland. They were up, what was this? Let me get the score here. They were up yeah, up 31 points at half and got the ball back at half. <laughs> hey, insert, My- Maryland does off the bench, bench Frank Wright. Wow. Literally six touchdowns in a row, it says. Six touchdown drives later in route to a 42-40 win. Wow. They're down 31 points at half. He has not even played. <laughs> he comes off the bench against, like I, I forgot what they're ranked, top five in the nation. Beats Miami. The year is now 1993. Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas on the sideline because they're hurt. Insert Frank Wright with uh, what was it? Three minutes left. Yeah, in the third or two minutes left in the third quarter. Down 35 to three. Five touch, five straight touchdown drives later. Yeah. Almost the exact same thing. They win in overtime this time, right. but 41 38. Are you kidding me? Well, I got another big comeback for you. Go ahead. You I got it. another big comeback. Do it. Cotton Bowl, the Ice Bowl, Notre Dame. Against Houston, quarterback Joe Montana. I figured you'd bring up Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> look at Rick. But like, hey, I see he says the same thing about me in Arkansas each week. So, uh, but you could look that one. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. I, I kind of remember that. Yeah, it was called the Ice Bowl yeah. down in Houston. I mean, the Cotton Bowl. Yep. And uh, which just held a lot of memorable games. And Notre Dame was down by several touchdowns at yeah. halftime, and. Joe Montana was sick with the flu. And played. And, and they were literally pumping chicken noodle soup down him at halftime and trying to get his body temperature back up. up. Yeah, because he wow. was desperately ill, and he came back the second half. That's that, that's that mental toughness you're yeah. talking yep. about. You know, and having people in your life uh, at some point, and one comes to mind to me is I was 13, 14 years old. I used to hang out at uh, – uh, this was 1960 – four, three. Anyway, uh, the, uh, at the time you had uh, all the little elementary schools or junior highs usually had a pool. Mm-hmm. And so they had coaches there in the summer huh. from the, uh, it was a, uh, from Dallas uh, Recreational Centers. Mm-hmm. And I worked one year at Cole Park behind North Dallas. Mm-hmm. And, but I was at Griner and a man named Jerry Rome, who was a college guy at the time, was working because he he went to Sunset, and uh, he went to S- he was went to SMU. He was all American at Sunset and went to SMU. Left SMU, went to University of Tulsa, and he had him and a, a receiver named Hart, Howard Tweely broke every probably NCAA record there ever was. And at the time, Jerry was a coach at Griner, but he needed somebody to throw the football to. Wow! And and I was the guy. <laughs> there you I, go. I ran Howard Twilly's patterns every day. Wow. And Jerry was working on his time and had to throw. He had to throw every day. That was his junior year. The second summer, he went to Lidaho, which which was about four blocks from my house, and he actually lived two blocks behind that park. So I started going there. And, I, <laughs> and then Howard came and stayed with Jerry, so I got the covering. Mm-hmm. But two years, I got to – 
thinking now, go, man, here I was 13, four years old. I was hanging out with a college guy. Right, yeah, right. Like all right. American. Yeah. Co- right. And then right. him and they broke every NCAA record. That's Jerry funny. was second in the Heisman Trophy. And I hear he should have been first. Yeah. And th- so that was a lucky experience for me. Like well, what a lucky yeah. guy to be exactly. around. Yeah. But, but I learned so much football because I was catching a ball from an NFL arm, basically, yeah, at right. that age. That. So right. that was just something that happened in my life. It was a great experience. Yeah. Hey, real quick. Uh, you just showed me right before the show started. Major League Coach of the Year. What 05. Year? 05. Major League, league Coach of the Year. I thought I looked coach, coach of the Year, yeah. Right. Just wanted to bring that up. Because I think in 2004. Was it one of those two? Yeah. What, I forgot what, the 99, there's a few different years when we're looking up where y'all, like, you, y'all, the old was, was 99 and was one of the four proudest years, years yeah. because um, the game was cleaned up. That's right. Yeah. By yeah. then. Right. Remember, the game was cleaned up, started whatever, but it was really cleaned up 01, 02, and 03. And these kids, you know, do you to realize how hard it is to go out there in the sun here in Texas? You know, day in and day out, you know, they were just playing, being like a kid. Yeah. You right. know, nothing in their system. There's love of the game. Right. And we put up some unbelievable numbers. Uh, we still hold a record for doubles. I think it was 370-something. Some one crazy. of the years y'all were second in, in itself, I think the record, well, not the record, but the second all-time in home runs in a, in a yes, team yeah, in the The New York Yankees were first. They held a record, but uh, I think once two hundred, no. 260. Two, 262, 60. I think. 260 is you. And you you have two sixty. Yes, two sixty. They had two sixty two. Seattle broke it one year, one or two home runs, and uh, wow, the yeah we used to hit six seven home runs at, that year like it was nothing. Yeah, like yeah. Golly. Yeah, but you <laughs> they know, must have had a good hitting coach. Just, the, yeah, the, right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, what it was. A good, we a did good it. hitting teacher. <laughs> I just hitting I was teacher. just glad I was part of it. Right, that is Correct. Good, yeah. That's awesome. But you know, I just want to thank all them players that I've had and. You know, I'm sure they thank you from, too. They you better know, if not. They had very, some of the greatest players that ever played the game. Yeah. And, um, I had lunch with Michael Young a couple of weeks back. You know, uh, we stay in touch here and awesome. there. And so, Pudge, uh, the one Pudge. that I hadn't even mentioned right now is Pudge. Yeah, Pudge, you know, Pudge, Pudge had yeah, Pudge I when mean, he was yeah. 16. Yeah, that's crazy. And, uh, you know, he's probably one of the hardest workers that I ever had. So dedicated. And, yeah. But he had that mental part in him, man. Like, you know, he wanted to be the best. He and was he, determined. And he knew what he had to do. To get to that, you point. can just see that watching him play. Oh, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Oh my Love, gosh, loves the game. All right, let's get into the stud or dud segment. NFL draft to me, overall snoozer. My dad literally slept through it all, and he has to cover the dang thing himself for a job, and he slept through most of it. Me myself, I kind of kept up for the Broncos' sake, which for the most part, eh, most people had them in the in the B category. Um, same with the Cow- Cowboys; they got about in the B category. Just to speak of our two teams, the overall, which you think talking about studs and mentors and great teachers, and every year they seem to have a great draft. The Pats, the overall, the Patriots were regarded as the best overall draft, anywhere from A minus to A plus. So yeah, they got it going on. Usually they do. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, since he did play baseball, what do you think about him being dra- drafted uh, first overall as a quarterback? He did the right thing. Yeah. So you did. You do think he did the right thing? Yeah, because he was going to the minor leagues. Exactly. You know, he's going on a bus. Yeah. And, uh, he never <laughs> failed. Yeah. Now you he's know? gonna have someone picking his bags and then, up and his bucklers well, and all that. You know how that is. He's doing on his own. And, you know, you get in the minor league, you get lonely. And, yeah. You know him being such a, you know, high profile type player. Yeah, especially great the last player. year getting the high, getting the Heisman yeah. Trophy. And just think, just think what he went through. Yeah. To get to where he's at. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine how many people were saying? After he left A and M, that he probably won't do anything. You know what I yeah. mean? Back again, fail. Somebody wants you to fail. Exactly, literally. And uh, man, he has done great. Yeah. And you know he's. And they had, and regarding the yeah, Cardinals actually supposedly did a pretty good job. They did good good with their front office. We'll see once again how their coach once again mentors. How we talk about that. How Cliff does Kingsbury. I just don't think he's pretty good with quarterbacks. I just don't think he's going to get the job done as a head coach there. So we'll see how that. And then here's well, the thing: if he surrounds himself with the right people, that is true because it's like Bill Clinton. I mean, I you know that, going back to people like where back in the day, as an I see him because he did have great success. Obviously, what he did for this nation, but it's because he surrounded himself with smart people. Presidents, a lot of the time, my point being, they're not usually the smartest person, but when you surround yourself with a great surrounding cast. Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, Miles Davis. Everybody knows who Miles yes, Davis is. Yes, great musician. Jazz. Great Miles Davis, right. right? Probably esteemed as like the greatest jazz musician of all time. Right. When asked, how did he become so great? He simply said, I just surrounded myself with great musicians. Yes, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, 
He goes, you surround yourself with greatness. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, that was the thing, too, about the back to the draft. It was just rankings were all over. You'd see teams from A, C minus, B plus. I'm like, so right. that's why I think this draft was a dud. We'll see. We'll see how time plays out. But I think overall this was kind of a dud draft. Won't, I don't think we're going to see too many highlighting names out of this right. five, ten years from now. We'll see. We'll Maybe see. I'm wrong. Never know. But I just think it was a dud draft. Did you even watch much of the draft no. at all? Yeah, I didn't figure no. you did. It was a dud. Uh, not, not that I – not that any draft's that entertaining, but this draft certainly was the least of which, and certainly, like I said, was le- uh, lackluster with names. Now to something I definitely can't wait to talk about, and now we don't have to go see it, Doc, but Marvel's Avengers Endgame. Be quick. Be quick. Because you, you could go on forever I, on this. But I no. will. Not go on forever, but yes, I could. And I just, I, <laughs> I've, least, I've lessened Because up. I want to talk to Rudy about some food real quick. Oh, so. yeah, food. Yeah. Yeah. Which, well, I've got to send him into the chamber of questions. I know Which it. food will be brought up? So be quick on your. Huh? What time? Yeah. Twelve ten. Good. He's got to go, man. His time's That's value. good. Avengers Endgame. Didn't yeah. like it. Time travel, you kidding me? I'm not into the Back to the Future. I'm not into the time. Well, I'm in, I love Back to the Future, but I'm not into time travel. If I want to see time travel, I'll go see Back to the Future. Brings me to the next point. It was like an ode to Marvel. All they did was, hey, these last 23 movies we've put out, well, since half of them have been snapped in the last movie, I'm going to go back in time, and we're going to go through all these other movies and pay tribute to these guys, you know? Like, what? No, I don't care. If I want to see whoever, I'll go see those right. movies. I want to see an, an actual good – I don't want to see you go back in time and have to get these stones. Anyway, didn't like that. Then you kill off Iron Man. You're going to kill off the guy that started it all, who started – who has created now a family. For the reason why I'm, I'm so mad about that fine if you kill – Iron Man, but you gotta, you're gonna let Captain America, if you didn't do this, but then they let Captain America, you know these names, right? You probably know it, Iron Man, Captain America. Well, Rudy's I'm, going like, huh, what's up? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? I love it. So anyway, then they let, I'm, anyway, they let Iron Man go back in time and live a life that he never had. So that means, like I said, that means thus he was never Captain America. I, w- I would have been okay, probably much better with the movie. Like, say, Iron Man died, they have this uniform, and then they go disperse the, uh, this, these stones that they have to do, then they move on. Right. But then they let Captain America go after you've killed Iron Man, who has a wife and a kiddo, by the way. You're going to go let him go back in time to this wife he never had or girl he never <laughs> got or whatever. Create kids with her, even though she has a wife and kids created already. Right. And then they made a movie. Captain he's, America 2, Winter Soldier. He's wound up about this. Movie. I am. You made, so you made this movie. His point being, you, here's my point. You made a movie, Captain America, Winter Soldier. Because Captain America had to go back in her or whatever, had to help his friend. Win. Anyway, so that means there was never that. This movie means essentially never happened, and you left Bucky Winter Soldier in confinement for seven years to get beat up and tortured. You need to take a vacation and chill out and relax. Oh. It's, it's okay. It's just goofy. Mm-hmm. It's just they didn't. I don't think they did a good job. Well. And now, to sum it all up. Anyway, so what do you want to ask him? Hey, Rudy, when you sit down and watch a ball game at home, you got a favorite meal? I don't watch baseball. <laughs> Sorry. You don't watch it. I don't watch baseball. Did you ever watch it when you were coaching at all, or you just had so much of it? No. Did you? I had it watching it. Too boring. <laughs> but that is awesome. Sorry. Yeah. So. I'm done with baseball, so yeah. it's not something, you know. Yeah, now you yeah. yeah I got What's your fun. favorite meal? Steak? You, could, you like a good steak on the grill? No, refried beans. Ooh. Re- refried beans and rice. Oh, yeah. And tortillas. There you go. Well, yeah, I mean, it all goes together. Yeah. Perfect. You ready for my chamber of questions? Get laid on him real quick. The chamber. So I have to say it like this. The chamber. Of questions. Okay. Out of all the players you've coached, who had the purest swing, who needed the least help? Now, I'm sure they all needed help from the the, the coach, you know, the, the hitting guru, so to speak. Well, you know, so many great hitters who had great swings. You know, you talk about Alex, Palmero, Juan Gonzalez, mm-hmm. Pudge. So those guys didn't need much on help. On. Those were guys that pretty much you, you got yeah. into and maybe gave them a little – tinkering here or there but they were no man let me tell you what you gotta it's, it's not like you get them from somewhere else and you think they're gonna be the same guy yeah right. you gotta go through with them like you do everyone else start from A to yes, all the way to exactly, Z exactly because you're trying to win them over yeah, yep, yep, and yep. you're trying to teach them something and yeah. mentally right. and physically right so once you want them over then I have so many great hitters that best hitter you've ever seen best there's, hitter there's ever been there you've ever seen You can name a couple. You don't have to just do one. Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn. There you go. Babe Ruth. Yeah. 
because I love him to death, and he does have just such a beautiful. Where would you put Griffey swing all time? Oh, Griffey had often swing, man. Yeah. He was so fluid and so much rhythm. You know? I loved it. I love seeing yeah. like his home runs were. Ju- yeah. They were. It's just like he didn't the even do anything. Left handers though have more rhythm than in their swing. They seem to do right so. Hands. Why is I that? that? I don't know. I have no idea. I was left handed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you threw right. You hit left yes. and threw right. Yes. Yeah. Most power you've ever seen, hitter wise. And power. Power. Juan Gonzalez, That's the most right. prolific line drive hitter I've ever seen. He I'm never hit him high. He hit him like he was hitting a one iron. Most <laughs> unbelievable. Could get some leverage that. Wow. It's unbelievable. Hardest pitcher, and because that's where I figured you at least have to watch some tape, maybe not. But hardest, I, did you prepare for pitchers? A. No doubt. Then who was the hardest you ever had to prepare for? Dibble. Really. I threw 101, 102, yeah. and that was, you know, that was in the 90s. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know if it was like when was, they won the World Series and yeah. they won four straight. They had Dibble. They had a. Uh, uh, they had three, two other guys that are throwing ninety eight. Yeah. Two left-handers. I can't even think of their names that year. Um, what were their names? Well, anyway, and they had a right-hander named Ayala who threw ninety six, ninety eight. So it was unbelievable the staff they had. Best pitcher ever. Oh man, I hate pitchers. So I'm not even. I know, right? So I knew it. I knew it. That's what I wanted to ask him for. I wonder if he even would. Right. <laughs> biggest, That's classic. That's classic. Biggest sports influence you had growing up? Uh, Jerry Rome and Felix Ortega. That's what I was wondering. I was wondering if it was going to go back to that. Yeah, those two guys. Who was your favorite athlete growing up to watch? Based on, I mean, if it was baseball, if it was football, Pete Rose, because mm. I hustled like Pete Rose. It doesn't. It, it doesn't take any ability to hustle. I hustled, I sprinted everywhere we went. And luckily when I went to University of Texas, we used to practice sprinting to our position and sprinting in. Huh. I loved it. Yeah. I sprinted everywhere I went. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's great. Because you're yeah. because if you see somebody out there sprinting, you're yeah. going, Oh my God. You got there's to. something yeah, exactly, there. Yeah. He, you know, you're gonna get a coach's attention yeah. or a scout or something. And then he can determine whether you're any good or not. Yeah. But at least you got his attention. Right. Bottom of the ninth, the bases are loaded, the game's tied. Who do you want at the plate? Sosa. Sosa. No, not. Yeah, but you know what? Juan Gonzalez. Yeah. Really? I jumped on that. And the reason I say that, because he had a knack to drive in runs. Uh, <clears throat> he was 16 years old in the Florida State League, and he was second in driving in runs. So nobody taught him that. Yeah. He just lived for that moment, huh? He just had that knack. Yeah. 19, whatever the year was, he had 100 RBIs at the half. Wow, I remember those, were, and that's what I was telling Doc. It's crazy so, to see the RBIs back in the '90s, how much they were throwing. You, you get 100 I mean, RBIs in the season, that, yeah. you're doing great. great. Juan had that at the, the half. half. Yep, I remember that season. Wow. So that's it. All right, beer or mar- beer or margarita with your Mexican food? Neither. Neither. What are you going with? Iced tea. I don't. I don't like to drink liquids when I eat. Oh wow! Thank you. I'm like a camel. I like. I'm one of those people. Literally, like, if I take a bite I don't of something, even drink water. You don't even drink water. No, I don't like to drink nothing until you, after I'm through. With I see meal. people that do that. And I'm like, how do you yeah. do? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cake or or cake or pie. Cake. What's your favorite cake? Chocolate. Chocolate. There, there you, you go. go. He didn't love hesitate. I love. I knew, he knew. He knew what's coming next. Candy or ice cream. Ice cream vanilla. Mm, <laughs> I love it. Would you put? Then you put the vanilla on top of the chocolate cake. Vanilla ice cream on top. Nah. No. Nah, Keep them separate. separate. Yeah, like you don't want right. to. You don't want to make. You don't want to mix. Favorite movie all time. I don't have one. I didn't know you. I didn't. This guy did the he had time to even watch even TV. Mm-hmm. Even how about growing up favorite TV show? Because I know I had you even watch TV that much, I would imagine. I know he was big into sports, but you had to watch maybe Andy Griffith uh, show, maybe something in the fifties, sixties. There was a lot of good TV back in the sixties. There was much documentaries when I watch. Do what? A lot of, a lot of um, nature documentaries. And oh stuff yeah, like that. Like, gotcha. Yeah. All time favorite song. I don't have one. Favorite band or musician? I don't have one. Yeah, All baseball. I'm surprised. I, I'm surprised no, you didn't say really. me. Oh, come on. Favorite musician. Come on now. Bob Lawrence. There you go. <laughs> there you go, Rudy. All right, so back there to what go. he just asked you a few minutes ago. Yes. It's very similar, and it may just be the same answer. It's your last meal. What are you eating, and what three people are you inviting? Dead or alive? Last meal. How are you going out? What do you want to eat? And my who do you son, want my daughter, and my mother. Cool. And then and you're eating the refried. Mexican food. That's right. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> oh, well, seriously, thank you so much for joining Rudy's. us. Thank like, you. Awesome, huge. Man. Anywhere we can find you, that's where we can get you on social media. Anywhere out there? I don't do anything. Done. He doesn't. No. He's like, he, no, I, he's low. Not, he's, I just lay low, and that's where I'm going to stay. Pretty good weekend ahead. we got Kentucky Derby coming up. Kentucky Derby. Air Jordan 4 is getting those this weekend. Those come out. They made the list. Um, let's see. Next week, got to get back in the NBA playoffs. Talk about Mother's Day. That's coming out. Mother's Day. 
and we're gonna talk about food, what we're gonna have, all that and much more. Don't forget to subscribe, listen to us, iTunes, our Heart Radio, SoundCloud, hear all the episodes, everything's up. Website's now updated at stundud.com. Thank you so much for joining us again, Rudy. It was an honor. Thank you, Rudy. Till next week, thank you for listening, everyone. I'm Josh Smith. Bob Lawrence. Peace.